Assalamualaikum and good morning. Today I'm going to present a topic regarding the best of the scalp and cranial fossa. Okay, before I'm going further to discuss on this topic, I would like to introduce to you all what actually scalp wall. Okay, the skull is actually is a skeleton of the head. It has two parts. Okay. It has two parts, the cranial vault okay, and also the facial skeleton. The cranial vault also known as a neurocranium or brain box. And facial skeleton is also known as a visceral cranium. So we have neurocranium and also visceral cranium. Okay, for the cranial vault, it provides a case for the brain and also the cranial meninges. Okay, and proximal part of the cranial nerve and also the vasculature of the brain. So that is regarding the cranial vault. Okay. It, it provides a casing for the brain. Okay. And for the facial skeleton or visual cranium is actually uh, this part of the bone or skull bone. Uh, okay. It's a bone surrounding the mouth, nose, and also the orbits. Okay. Okay. There is a skull. And then now we're going to discuss on what is, uh, what are the two parts of the neurocranium. Okay, for the neurocranium, it has two parts: calvaria or skull cap or roof, and the cranial base, base cranium or flow. Okay, so we have the calvaria and also the cranial base. Okay, so just now. The skull, the, just now that I mentioned early in my part of my lecture, I mentioned that skull is divided into two parts, the neurocranium and also the uh, facial skeleton, visceral, cra visceral cranium. Okay, these are the bones that form the neurocranium. So you can see here, we have the single bone and paired bone. Uh, for the single bone, we have the frontal bone, we have the occipital bone, we have the sphenoid, we have the ethmoid. Bone, we have the temporal bone and parietal bone. For the single, uh, for the facial skeleton, it also uh, there are two type of bone that also form the facial skeleton. We have the single bone and also pair bone. For the single bone, we have the mandible, we have the vomer and ethmoid. We have uh, for the pair bone, we have the maxilla, zygomatic, nasal, lacrimal, palatine, and inferior nasal concave. Okay, we are focused on the neurocranium. So, the neurocranium is consists of eight bone. We have four single bone and two pair bone. Okay, so you have to remember the neurocranium, it consists of eight bones, four single bone and two pair bone. And the bone forming the calvaria are primarily flat bone. This is very important, uh, important statement that you have to remember. Important fact that you have to remember. Bone that forming the calvaria. What is calvaria just now? The skull cap, right? So I go back to the first part of my lecture. So you can see here calvaria, the skull cap. So bone forming the calvaria, calvaria are primarily flat bone. So the uh, these are the bone that form the calvaria. So you can uh, uh, so here we have the frontal bone temporal bone and also the parietal bone. So you can see here, this is the left temporal bone. Okay, this is the part of the bone that form the calvary. So, okay. And for the spinot bone and adboid bone, it is a irregular bone. Okay. So you can see here, this is a spinot bone and this is the adboid bone. So you can see here, the shape is irregular shape. Okay, so the neurocranium just now we are divided into two parts the cranial base and also the calvaria. Okay, for the cranial base, uh, so yes, these are the bones that form the cranial base. Okay, the occipital bone, okay, uh, except the upper part uh, of its squama. Okay, because the upper part is uh, it form the calvaria 
of uh, Calvaria. Okay, and then we have the petro uh, petro part of the temporal bone that form the uh, cranial base, and then we have the body, laser wing, and roots of the greater wing of the sphenoid that also form the cranial base, and the ethmoid bone. Okay, and this part of the bone. Okay, uh, it develops uh, through the endochondral ossification. Okay. Uh, and for the orbital plate of the frontal bone and the lateral part of the greater wing of the spinal bone, it develops from the uh, it develops through the intramembranous ossification. Okay. I hope you still remember the two types of the ossification. Okay, and then for the calvaria. Uh, these are the bones that form the calvaria. We have the uh, frontal bone, we have the frontal bone, we have the squamous part of the temporal bone, and upper part of the occipital squamous. So these are all the bone that form the part of the bone that form the calvaria. Okay, I repeat back. So we have the frontal bone, frontal bone, squamous part of the temporal bone, and upper part of the occipital squamous. And then uh, this uh, bone uh, developed through an uh, intramembranous ossification. Okay, for the facial skeleton, it consists of 15 bones. So we have three a single um, bone and six pair bone. Okay, all bones are irregular type of bones. And then the other uh, important facts that we have to remember is all developed through the intramembranous ossification, except the inferior nasal concave, and also the ethmoid. Okay, except these two, except inferior nasal concave and also the ethmoid. So you can see here, this is the right inferior nasal concave. Okay, this is the lateral aspect, and this is the medial aspect. Right, inferior nasal concave. And okay, this picture just to show you the uh, nasal bone. Okay, so you can see here mm. the same picture that I have shown you just uh, before, but here uh, it uh, it uh, based on the different type of the bone here, whether it's a single bone or pair bone. We have a different type of a uh, different way of a uh, uh, bone development. So you can see here, the star shape here it represents uh, endochondral ossification, and the edge pattern here it represents the mixed endochondral and also the intramembranous ossification. Okay, so you can see here, uh, occipital bone, spinal bone that uh, that uh, belong to the single bone that form the cranial uh, neurocranium. These two bones it develop from through the mixed endochondral and also the intramembranous ossification. For the ethmoid, it develop through the uh, endochondral ossifications. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to proceed to the next slide. Pneumatized bone. Okay. Pneumatized bone it contain air cell or larger sinuses. Okay. So uh, we have the frontal, we have the maxilla, we have the spinoid, we have the ethmoid. And the temporal part, we have the mastoid, uh, the part. Number one to number four, it contains the paranasal sinuses. Paranasal sinuses, uh, the size is more larger. The space. The space. Okay, but mastoid uh, part here, the temporal, uh, the mastoid part of the temporal bone, uh, it contains the air cell, small, small one. Okay. Okay, for the scalp. Okay, this is an important plane that you have to know. The orbital metal plane. That equal to the Femford horizontal plane. Okay, the orbital metal plane or Femford horizontal plane is a standard craniometric reference. Okay. So in the anatomical positions, the skull is oriented so that the inferior margin of the orbit, so you can see here, the inferior margin of the orbit on the and the superior margin of the external acoustic meatus of both sides, huh, 
lie in the same horizontal plane. So this is the orbital uh, orbi, uh, orbital meter plane. Okay, whenever you put the the inferior margin of the orbit and also the superior margin of the external interstate meters, okay, on both sides, okay, lie in the same horizontal plane. Okay, now we're going to proceed to the next part. Okay, suture. We have the several suture that presents uh, on the skull bone. We have the coronal suture. If you see here, this is the coronal suture. We have the secretal suture. We have the lomboidal suture and others. Okay, frontanium. This is a, uh, another important uh, things that you have to know. Hmm? Frontanium. Frontanium is the area of fibrous tissue membrane that separating the bones of the calvaria of the newborn infant, okay, newborn infant. You only can found, uh, you only can find the frontanel in the newborn infant, okay. Okay. So this uh, fibrous tissue membrane, it separate the bone of the calvaria. So you can see here, we have the, okay, frontanel here. Okay. So there are six uh, frontanel uh, together. So we have the anterior frontanel, then this uh, anterior frontanel will become a future site of break mark. And then at the back there, we have the uh, posterior frontanel that become a future site of the lambda. And on the other side here, we have the anterolateral and posterolateral frontanel, okay, of spinodal or mastoid, okay, time two on the other side. Okay, so altogether we have uh, six frontanel. Okay. Okay, the anterior frontanel. So you can see here, this is the anterior frontanel. This is the posterior frontanel. This is the anterior frontanel. And this is the spinodal frontanel. And this is a mastoid frontanel. Okay, the same thing, the same picture, the, just to show you all the frontanel. We have the spinodal, uh, spinodal frontanel, mastoidal, mastoid frontanel, and then anterior frontanel and poster, uh, posterior frontanel. Okay, and then now we're going to proceed with the important body landmark that you have to know. The first one is a therion. Okay, what is the therion? It's a junction of greater wing of spinoid, squamous temporal, temporal bone, squamous part of the temporal bone, frontal bone, and also the vital bone. Okay, it's a junction of this uh, four bone. Okay, therion. So you can see here, this is the therion. So we have the hmm, greater wing of the spinoid. Hmm, you can see here, greater wing of spinoid. And then we have the squamous part of the temporal bone. And then we have the hmm, frontal bone. And then we have the uh, parietal bone at the back here. So uh, this is a theory. Uh, it forms a junction between these four bones. And then the lambda is a junction of the, the junction between the lamboidal and sigatal suture. So you can see here, this is the lambda. It's a junction between the uh, secretary suture and number of suture. Okay. So you can see here, this is a number of suture. Mm, I want to show you the other picture later. Okay. So this is the lambda. And bregma is a junction between the coronal and sagittal suture. Okay. And this is the bregma. It's a junction between the, it's now the coronal suture and sagittal suture. So you can see here, this is the coronal suture. And then the vertex. Vertex. Vertex is a, a superior point of the neuroclinum. Okay, this is the vertex, the most superior point of the neurocranium. Okay, and then the asterion. Okay, the asterion. This is this, this is the asterion. It's a junction uh, of the parietal mastoid, occipital mastoid, and lumboidal suture. Okay, junction between the parietal mastoid, parietal, uh, uh, between the uh, lumboidal suture. Okay, parietal mastoid, uh, parietal mastoid. And also the occipital mastoid suture. Okay. These are the three suture. Okay. 
Lumbar suture, Python mastoid, and also the occipital mastoid suture. So you can see here, that is the hysteria. Okay. And then glabella is a smooth prominent on the frontal bone. So this is the glabella, smooth you know, prominent part of the uh, frontal bone, superior to the root of the nose. So you can see here, this is the root of the nose, and superior to the root of the nose. And inion is the most prominent point of the external occipital protuberance. So this is the inion. And then next ion is a junction of the frontal between the frontal nasal and internasal structure. So this is the next ion. Okay, so it, all the six body landmark that you have to know. Okay, remember, eh? please remember. Okay. So for the frontal bone, it has three parts. Okay, the squamous part, the nasal part, and also the orbital part. Okay, so these are the three part of the frontal bone that you can see. Okay, from anterior. Okay, the squamous part, the nasal part, <coughs> and also the orbital part. And then the other important, important mark uh, at the frontal bone that you have to know is a uh, um, frontal tuberosity. Okay, frontal tuberosity. And then we have the uh, superciliary arch or rich ridges. And then we have the supraorbital margin. So you can see here, this is the margin. Okay, supraorbital margin. Okay, and superciliary arch. So you can see here. This, this is the super ciliary arch. Okay. Okay. And then we also have the supraorbital notch. So you can see here. So this is the supraorbital. Okay, supraorbital uh, notch with the foramen. Okay. And then we have the uh, superior wall of the orbital cavity. So you can see here. This is the superior wall of the orbital cavity. So these are. Uh, the the part of the frontal bone that you can see from the anterior part. Okay. Okay, and then for the maxilla, uh, for the maxilla bo maxillary bone, so you can see here, this is the maxillary bone. Okay, the green color bone here. Okay. 
And there are a few number of important landmarks uh, that you have to know. The alveolar process with a socket. So you can see here, this is the alveolar process of the maxillary bone. Okay, with a socket. Okay, it's like it's look like a socket of the bulb. Socket of the bulb. And then we have the maxillary teeth. So you can see here, this is the maxillary teeth. And then we have the piriform aperture or anterior nasal aperture. The anterior nasal aperture actually is opening in front here. Okay. And then we have the infraorbital foramen. So this is the infraorbital foramen. And then we have the intermaxillary suture. So in the middle here, we have the intermaxillary suture. Uh, this one is more clear. You can see here, this is the intermaxillary suture. Okay. And then the nasal septum in the middle. Okay. So this is the nasal septum. So the nasal septum is formed by the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Okay, you can see here that we have the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone and also the vomus. Okay, so there is, this is the part of the bone that form the nasal septum. Okay, that is regarding the uh, maxillary bone. Okay, now we're going to proceed with the zygomatic, uh, zygomatic bone. So this is the zygomatic bone. So the important and what do you have to know in the zygomatic bone is a zygomatico facial foramen. So you can see here, this is the zygomatico facial foramen. And then the ethmoid bone, okay, the ethmoid bone, the other important uh, thing that you have to know is the superior and middle nasal concave and also the superior and middle nasal nectus. Nectus is uh, actually is opening. So here you can you only can see the middle nasal concave of the ethmoid bone. Okay. And then we have the inferior nasal concave. Okay, this is the, the inferior nasal concave. Okay. And then we, we also have the opening here for the inferior nasal concave, the inferior nasal meatus. And then the nasal bone. So this is the nasal bone. We have in the middle here, we have the internasal suture. Okay, you can see the line there. Okay, this is the disarticulated bones. This, the, uh, disarticulated bone. Uh, whenever you uh, separate the bone, okay, so, so you can see the disarticulated skull bone. Okay, this is the maxillary bone. So you can see here, this is the infraorbital foramen, and this is the anterior nasal spine. Okay, and then we have the alveolar margin. Okay, with the, all the so the maxillary teeth here. Okay, inside the socket. Okay. And then uh, we have the zygomatic process here. And then we also, uh, this uh, max, maxillary bone, it forms the uh, orbital, uh, the, in, the flow of the orbital, uh, orbital surface. And then we have the frontal process here. Okay, this is the zygomatic bone. So you can see here, zygomatic bone, we have the frontal process, we have the temporal process, and the maxillary process. Okay, uh, this is the ethmoid bone. So you can see here, it is an irregular type of bone. Okay, and then we have the right inferior nasal concave okay, on the middle aspect, and then this is the lateral aspect, and this is the left nasal bone. Okay, uh, now we're going to discuss on the bone that you can see on the lateral aspect of the skull. So the bone that you can see on the lateral aspect is a frontal bone, vital bone, temporal bone, occipital bone. Okay. And the remaining bone that you can see, uh, that you can see, that you can observe on the lateral aspect is a, uh, you can see here, this is the spinal bone, zygomatic bone, maxillary bone, nasal bone. Okay. And also the lacrimal bone. Okay. So on the lateral aspect, there are, you, you, there are a few number of important bony landmark that you have to know. Okay. You can see here, this is the uh, the temporal fossa, okay, the temporal fossa, and then uh, below the uh, inf uh, below the temporal fossa we have the infra temporal fossa. You have to remove this uh, part first, okay, in order to see the infra temporal fossa, and then the zygomatic arch. You can see here, this is the zygomatic arch, okay, zygomatic arch. Uh, it is formed by the uh, zygomatic process of the 
temporal bond. So this is the zygomatic process of the temporal bond, and also the temporal process of the zygomatic bond. This is the zygomatic arch. And then we have the superior and inferior temporal line. So this is the superior temporal line. So this is the inferior temporal line. And then we also have the very important landmark here, the therion. Okay, the, the, the junction of the four bond that I have discussed earlier. Okay, just to show you all the things that I have mentioned earlier. So you can see here we have the superior, temp uh, superior temporal line. We have the inferior temporal line. We have the therion here. Okay. And the other remaining part yeah, that I have mentioned. So. Okay, and then we have the vital eminence here. Okay. Okay, on the temporal bone, there are a few important part that you have to know. The you can see here this is the uh, squamous part of the um, temporal bone. Okay, and then we also have the opening of the external acoustic meters. Hmm. You can see here, this is the opening for the external acoustic meters. And we also have the mustard process of the temporal bone, okay? And the standard process, okay? These are the important part of the uh, temporal bone that you have to know, that you can see on the lateral aspect of the skull. Okay, for the temporal bone itself, it consists of five parts. We have the squamous part. We have the tympanic, uh, we have the squamous part, okay? We have the tympanic part, so you can see here, mm, this is the uh, tympanic segment, okay, more clear, yeah, tympanic segment, so the green color here, okay, and then uh, we have the petrous part, mm, petrous must, uh, you can see here, this is the petrous part, this one is more uh, clear, the petrous portion, okay, eh, sorry, uh, the petrous part, sorry, uh, not that one, this is the petrous part, Okay, the petrous portion. Not this one. This is the mastoid portion. Okay, this is the petrous portion. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, and then we have the mastoid part. Okay, you can see here. This is the mastoid portion that I mentioned just now. Okay. And this is the mastoid portion. Okay. So this petrous part is here. Okay. To correct back what I have mentioned just now. Okay. This is the petrous part. Okay. Okay, and then the standard process. Okay, you can see here, this is the standard process. Okay. Okay, now we're going to uh, see the skull bone from the posterior aspect, from the back of the skull. So, these are the bone that you can see from the posterior aspect. Okay. Posteriorly, you can see the parietal bone, the occipital bone, and also the temporal bone. Okay. Okay, now we're going to discuss on the few important landmark that you can see on the posterior aspect. Okay, this first one is the external occipital protuberance. Okay, the external occipital protuberance, the prominent part here. Okay, the inion that I have mentioned earlier. Okay, the prominent part. Okay, and then we have the external occipital crest, the external occipital crest, and then we have the uh, superior nuchal line. We have the inferior. We have the inferior nuchal line. Okay, eh, sorry. So the superior nuchal line. We have the inferior nuchal line. Sorry, not this one. Hmm? Superior nickel line, we have the inferior nickel line. Okay. And then uh, the lambda, the lambda, the lambda, okay? the lambda. So you can see here, this is the lambda. Okay, lambda is a junction between the uh, lumboidal suture and also the secretal suture. This is the lambda. Okay. So these are the important bony landmark that you have to know hmm, on the posterior, posterior aspect. Okay, the lambda, you can see there. Okay, you can see here, this is more clear. The superior nuclear line, this is the inferior nuclear line. Okay. And then uh, the lambda is actually a junction between the, uh, the secretary switcher and also the remote switcher. Okay. And then we also have the external occipital protuberance here. Okay. And the remaining, the remaining part. Uh, uh, the, uh, sorry, this is the external occipital protuberance. Okay, and then the, the the remaining part you can see on your own. Okay, okay the, if you want to see the external occipital protuberance, you can see here it's more clear. So you can see here this is the external occipital protuberance. Okay, so this is the external occipital crest. This is the inferior nuchal line. This is the uh, highest curve line. Okay, okay, 
and then we can hit and see here this is the foreign main menu okay uh, the sutural bond okay the accessory bond the accessory bond you can see here this is the accessory bond huh? and as usually it uh, happened at the lambda or near the master process okay. so accessory bond okay now we're going to see the skull bond from the super aspect okay these are the the bond that you can see from the front uh, from the super aspect okay you can see the frontal bond frontal bond and also the occipital bond Okay, and then we have the frontal eminence, vital uh, eminence. Uh, vital eminence should be here, the, 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 the prominent part. Okay? The, uh, the frontal eminence should be here, the prominent part. And then we have the coronal suture, sagittal suture. And then at the back there, we have the lumbar suture. Okay, and the uh, brachma, is, you can see here, this is the brachma intersection between the uh, sagittal suture and also the coronal suture. Okay, a junction between the, these two suture. And uh, the lambda at the back there, here is a uh, uh, intersection uh, between the uh, circuit suture and also the lumbar suture. And the vertex, vertex is the most superior point of the skull. Okay. Sometimes you can see the vital uh, foramen also. This is circuit suture, this is lumbar suture. This is lambda. Okay, now we're going to proceed on the external surface of the cranial nerves. Okay, so these are the bones that you can see on the external surface of the cranial base. Okay, we have the at the back here we have the occipital bone, we have the uh, the temporal bone. Okay, okay. this is the, the the temporal bone, and going to the front here we have the uh, spinoid bone. Okay, and then we have the Mm, maxillary bone, okay, and then we have the uh, palatine bone. So this is the palatine bone, and the vomer, mm, and we have the zygomatic mm -hmm. bone. So these are the bone that you can see on the uh, cranial base, the external surface. Okay, we're going to see uh, each uh, important mark mm, on each bone. Mm. So for the alveolar arch, mm, alveolar arch, you can see here mm, the on the uh, actually alveolar arch you can see on the maxillary bone. It is a U shape, U shape, and then we have the alveolar process uh, with the socket uh, and also the maxillary teeth. Okay, maxillary teeth here, and then we have the um, palatine process of the maxilla. Okay, this is the palatine process of the maxilla, and uh, which is uh, it forms the anterior part of the heart palate. And we also have the incisive fossa. You can see here incisive fossa with the foramen. Okay. And then in the middle here we have the, uh, sorry, in the median here we have the median palatine suture. Okay, this is the median palatine suture. They divide these two, uh, part, okay, into right and left half. Okay, median palatine suture, by a median palatine suture. And then for the palatine bond, okay, these are the important and you need to see. Okay, the posterior nasal spine. So this is the posterior nasal spine at the back here. And then we have the horizontal plate. This is the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Horizontal plate of the palatine bone is from the posterior part of the heart palate. Posterior aspect of the heart palate. And then we have the tubercle. Uh, tubercle or pyramidal process. So you can see here, uh, this is the Pinimidal process, uh, slightly elevated part, lah. Okay, pinimidal process, and uh, we have the greater and lesser, uh, greater and lesser uh, opening. Okay, if you see here, we have the this one. Uh, this one is a lesser palatine foramina, and then we also have the greater palatine foramina in the front here. Lesser palatine foramina, there are two in them. Greater palatine foramina only. One. Okay, and coanae is a posterior nasal aperture. Okay, you can see here the opening here, the coanae. And then we have the transverse palatine suture. These are important in mark. You, can, you need to see on the inferior aspect. Okay, and then the vomer. So you can see here, this is the vomer. Okay, the vomer it has the ala. This is the part that you can see the ala. And then uh, this this is the posterior border. 
Okay. So when you see from the lateral aspect, you can see here, and this is the bomber. Okay, you can see the, the bomber. Okay. Okay, for the spinot bond, this is an important landmark that you have to see. Okay. We have the body and greater wing. Okay. Well, this is the, uh, you can see here, this is the greater wing of the spinot. So this, uh, the, uh, the body, this is the part of the body. Lah. Okay, the part of the body. The part of the body is more clearer if you see the spoonot bone from the entry part. Okay. And then, uh, and then uh, tidugat process. Okay. Uh, tidugat process, if you see here, we have uh, the two part. We have the lateral and also the medial. Okay. This is the medial. You can see here, this is the medial plate of the trigger process. This is the uh, lateral plate of the trigger process. Okay, so we have lateral and also the medial. Okay, and then we also have the trigger hamulus. As you can see here, this is the trigger hamulus. Okay. And then we have the trigger fossa. The trigger fossa here, this is the trigger fossa. Fossa is a space, eh? trigger fossa. Okay, and then we have the spine of the spinoid. Okay. We, uh, if you see here, this is the spine of the spinoid, huh? and then we have the a few number of opening that you need to know. Okay, uh, we have the foramen ovale. So you can see here, this is the foramen ovale, and at the back there, moving toward the back, we have the foramen spinosum. Okay, and then we have the foramen residuum. Here. Okay, this is an important body uh, bony opening that you have to know. Okay, foramen ovale. Slightly bigger in size uh, compared to the spermin uh, from in spinosum. Spermin spinosum is located behind, toward behind or posterolateral to the foramen, uh, to the foramen. Okay, the foramen spinosum is posterolateral, posterolateral to the foramen. And then foramen the serum here, it is between the spinoid bone and also the temporal bone. The back here we have the uh, uh, sorry. at the back uh, here we have the temporal. Bone. Okay, this is the temporal bone between the spinal bone and also the temporal bone. Okay. Okay, you can see here. This is more clear. I think you just now, whenever you see from the uh, posterior aspect, sorry, not anterior aspect. Okay, from the posterior aspect, you can see the body. It's more clear. Okay. Okay. Whenever you see uh, from the posterior aspect, you can see the body. It's more clear, lah. Uh. So we have the lesser wing, we have the greater wing here, okay? And then you can see here the opening, the spray orbital fissure, okay? And we have the, you can see here, the, this is the trigger hem, uh, hemolus, uh, and then we have the trigger canal, we have the lateral trigger pad and medial trigger pad. Okay? okay, on the temporal bond, these are important and that you have to know. We have the, you can see here, we have the zygomatic process of the temporal bond. Uh, and then we have the articular tubercle, articular tubercle, and then we have the mandibular fossa, and then we have the stylet process here. This is the stylet process, okay. And we have we also have the uh, uh, petro tympanic fissure, petro tympanic fissure, okay. And then we have the keratic canal. Uh, sorry, we, we have also have the keratic canal. This is the keratic canal. You can see here. This is the keratic canal. And this is the external acoustic meters. The opening. Lah. External acoustic meters. And this is the this is the uh, keratic canal. Okay, keratic canal. External acoustic meters and keratic canal. Opening that you have. And then we also have the uh, mustard canaliculus. Okay. And then we have here, this is the mustard process of the temporal bone. And at the, uh, here, at the uh, posterior to the standard process, we have the stylomastoid foramen. Okay, and then the remaining part you can see on your own later. Okay, we have the petrous part of the temporal bone. Okay, and we also have the uh, mastoid notch. You can see here, this is the mastoid notch. Okay, these are the important body landmark to have to know. Okay, for the occipital bone, these are few number of things that you need to see. Okay, on the uh, inferior aspect of the skull eh, for the occipital bone. For the occipital bone, it has four parts. The squamous part, this is the squamous part. And the basilar part, 
and also the natural or condylar part. So you can see here, uh, this is the condylar condyla part, uh, exospital uh, ex, uh, on each side. And uh, we have the occipital condyle here, you can see that this commerce part of the occipital bone. Okay. Foramen uh, magnum, the big opening here, very obvious. And then we have the hypoglossal, uh, hypoglossal canal. Uh, this is also the important canal that you have to know. This is the hypoglossal canal. You can see here, this is the hypoglossal canal. And then at the back here, we have the condyla canal. Okay. Posterior condyla canal. Okay. And for the heart palate, the anterior to third of the heart palate formed by the palatine process of the maxillary. And the posterior one third is formed by the horizontal plate of the palatine. And then we have the opening that I have shown you just now in the early part of my lecture. And uh, we also have the posterior nasal spine. Here, you can see here, posterior nasal spine. And we also have the incisive fossa. Okay, incisive fossa uh, with the foramen. And we have the cruciate switcher. Cruciate switcher is actually is a combination between these two, uh, two switcher. Okay. So it forms like a T, okay, cruciate, like a cross. Okay, just now we have discussed on the uh, external aspect of the skull bone. Now we're going to discuss on the internal aspect of the uh, cranial base. Okay, the aspect of the cranial base. Okay, so uh, at the cranial base, internal aspect for the internal aspect, uh, it has uh, three depression. Okay, three depression that you have to know. And this the three depression actually is located at the different level. We have the anterior cranial fossa. This is the anterior cranial fossa. We have the middle cranial fossa, and at the back here we have the posterior cranial fossa. Okay, for the anterior cranial fossa, okay, here this is called anterior cranial fossa. It is formed by the frontal bone. Okay, frontal bone anteriorly. Okay, this is the anterior, uh, frontal bone, and etmoid bone in the middle. Etmoid bone in the middle. Okay, and body body and laser wing okay, of the spinoid bone posterior. Okay, these are the bone that form the anterior cranial fossa. Okay, so you can see here, this is the edmond bone. This is the frontal bone, the orbital part of the frontal bone. And this is the, the spinoid bone. Okay. The, front, the important landmark that you can see on the frontal bone is the orbital part of the frontal bone. Okay. And we have the frontal crest here. You can see this is the frontal crest. Okay. And then you also can find you also can find the foramen. Sometimes you can also can find the foramen cecum. Okay, this is the foramen cecum. Okay. And for the etmoid bone, okay, we have the crista galli. Crista galli is like a, a, a elevated portion. Okay. And then we have the creepy palm. Plate. You can see on the other side we have the cribal complete of the edmoid bone. Okay. And we also have the anterior and posterior edmoid foramina. Anterior and posterior edmoid foramina. Okay. And then we have the laser wing here. You can see here this is laser wing. These are the important bones that form the anterior cranial fossa. For the middle cranial fossa, okay, we it, it divided into two parts: the central part and the lateral part. The central part here, uh, it is from uh, we have the senatusica on the body of the spinoid bone. On the third aspect here, on the third part, uh, it is formed by the greater wing of the spinoid. So this is the greater wing of the spinoid. The squamous part, the squamous part of the temporal bone. Okay, and also the anterior surface of the petrous part of the temporal bone. Okay, squamous part of the temporal bone. Uh, Inter surface of the petrous part of the temporal bone. Okay, so these are the part from the middle cranial fossa. Okay, now we're going to discuss on the cella tussica specifically. Okay, so the tussica, in Latin it is uh, known as a Turkish saddle. So the so cella tussica it is surrounded by the anterior and posterior clinal process. Clinal uh, uh, process. So if you see here, this is the anterior clinic process and this is the posterior clinic process. So the sedatusica is surrounded by this clinic process. Okay. 
it is composed of three part. So it has three part: the tuberculum cellae, saddle horn, tuberculum cellae. So you can see here, this is the tuberculum cellae. Okay. Uh, hyperfossal fossa, hyperfossal fossa, this is space. Okay. And then the dozen cellae. Okay, you can see here, this is the dozen cellae. Okay. Dozen cellae is a flat square plate of bone of the body of the spoon. And the other important landmark that you have to know is a spinoidal crease. So you can see here, this is the spinoidal crease. Spinoidal crease. And then we have the spinoidal limbus. Okay. This is the uh, spinoidal limbus. You can see here, this is the spinoidal limbus. And we have the pechiasmatic sulcus. So you can see here, we have the pechiasmatic sulcus. Yeah, sulcus or sulcus. Lah. Okay. Okay, the middle cranial fossa is separated from the anterior cranial fossa by the spinodal crest here. By the spinodal crest, separated from the anterior cranial fossa in front here. Middle cranial fossa is separated from the anterior cranial fossa in front here by the spinodal crest. And also by the spinodal limbus. It's by the spinodal limbus at the central part here. Okay, this is the boundary. The divide between the anterior cranial fossa and also the middle cranial fossa. There are a few number of important opening that you have to know here. Okay, the first one is the optic canal. So you can see here, this is the optic canal. Okay, the optic canal, and we also have the foramen lacerum. Okay, the foramen lacerum, the cranial fossa, foramen lacerum, and we also have the groove uh, or hiatus uh, for the greater petrosal nerve. Okay, and you can see here, um, this is the uh, groove. Groove for the uh, greater petrosal nerve, okay, and then groove for the middle meningeal artery, uh, which is not shown here, lah. okay, that uh, that closely related to the period. So, so this is an important bonding landmark that we have to know. Okay, the foramen lacerum here, foramen lacerum. The optic canal, just to uh, uh, to repeat back, eh? optic canal, foramen lacerum, groove. Okay, groove for the greater petrosal nerve and groove for the middle meningeal artery, which is not shown here. Okay, on the posterior cranial fossa, okay, it is formed by the occipital bone. This is the occipital bone. Okay, and uh, the, we have the basilar part posterior, uh, uh, basilar part anteriorly. Uh, okay, basilar part anteriorly. And let, uh, the lateral part, uh, condylar part, uh, anterior inferiorly, and squamous part, uh, posteriorly. So there is the bone that form the uh, posterior fossa for the occipital bone. For the posterior surface, uh, posterior surface, a uh, posterior uh, surface of the petrous part of the of the occipital bone. Uh, sorry, posterior surface, posterior surface of the petrous part of the temporal bone, and also the mastoid. Uh, mustard part of the temporal bone also form the posterior canal fossa. Okay, this is the posterior surface of the petrous part of the uh, temporal bone. Okay, temporal bone. Okay, hmm? temporal bone. and the mustard process of the uh, temporal bone that also form the uh, posterior canal fossa. Okay, so the posterior canal fossa it lodge in the cerebellum. Cerebrum is a little brain and pons and also the medulla oblongata. So there are a few number of important features that you have to know in the posterior canal fossa. The clivus, which is the posterior part of the dosem cellae, plus the basilic part of the occipital bone. Uh, I, I don't have a picture. Okay, later I will show you the, the clivus. Ah, yeah, here. Yeah. Okay, this is the Clivus. Okay, clivus. Hmm. It is at the posterior part of the dosem salae. Hmm. Uh, the posterior part of the dosem salae. So you can see here, this is the dosem salae. Posterior part of the dosem salae. And also the, uh, the basilar part of the occipital bone. So it forms the clivus. And the foramen magnum, definitely, is very huge here. Foramen magnum. Okay. The cerebellar fossa. So you can see here, this is the cerebellar fossae. Or fossa. Fossae is a plural. Fossa is singular. And we also have the internal occipital crest. You can see here, this is the internal occipital crest. We have the internal occipital protuberance. Okay. 
and then we have the groove for the transverse and sigma sinus. Uh, we, this is the <coughs> okay, and this is more clear. And this is the uh, the detail I will show you. This is the groove for the uh, for the transverse sin uh, for the uh, transverse sinus, and this is the groove for the sigma sinus. Okay. okay, so you can see here. If you see here, okay, this is the groove for the transverse sinus. More clear, this is the groove for the sigma sinus. And then we also have the internal acoustic meters. Okay, so this is the internal acoustic meters. Okay, and the hypoglossal canon. Okay, this is the hypoglossal canon. Okay, and then condyla canon, which is the posterior condyla canon, which is not shown in this picture. Okay, these are they are the important body landmark that we have to. Okay, now we're going to see what are the opening that we have there, and also the structure that passing through this opening. Okay, the in the anterior canal fossa, these are the three opening that we have. We have the foramen cecum. Uh, here, these are the structure that passing through the foramen cecum, the nasal and nasal band, in one percent of the population. And then we have the foramina in the cribriform complex. Okay, foramina in the cribriform complex, and the structure that passing through the this foramina is axon of the olfactory cell. Okay, in the olfactory epithelium that form the olfactory nerve. And then we have the anterior and posterior ethmoidal foramina. The structure that passing through the this foramina is vessel and the nerve that we send them. With the same name now. For example, we have the anterior and also the posterior ethmoidal artery and brain. And also the nerve. It carries a similar name with the opening. Okay, in the middle cranial fossa, we have the optic canal. We have two uh, structures that are passing through the optic canal. We have the second cranial nerve and also the optic, uh, optomic trees. And <clears throat> superior orbital fissure, we have the optomic vein, we have the third cranial nerve, fourth cranial nerve, and optomic, uh, optomic nerve, optomic division of the uh, trigeminal nerve, and sixth cranial nerve, as well as the sympathetic fiber uh, that pass into the superior orbital fissure. In foramen retendum, we have the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve or maxillary nerve. And then foramen ovale, we have the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. Okay. Or mandibular, or mandibular nerve. Lah. And we also have the accessory meningeal nerve huh? and the, the serpetrosal nerve and imagery band that also passing through the foramen ovale. And for the foramen spinosum, we have the middle meningeal artery and vein and meningeal branch of the uh, mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. They're also passing through the foramen spinous. In foramen deserum, uh, uh, the structure that passing through this uh, opening is a deep petrosal nerve and some meningeal arterial branches and small vein. Okay. And the groove <coughs> or heights of the greater petrosal nerve, huh? uh, usually the structure passing through this groove is a greater petrosal nerve and petrosal branch of the middle meningeal artery. Okay, in the posterior cranial fossa, so we have the several opening here. We have the foramen magnum, where these are the all structure that passing through the foramen magnum. Medulla, meninges, metabolic artery, spinal root of the uh, spinal root of the cranial nerve number 11. Okay, and then we have the dural vein, anterior and posterior spinal arteries. For uh, jugular foramen, we have the 9 cranial nerve, 10 cranial nerve and uh, 11 cranial nerve. Okay, but here again, okay, for, the, for the foramen magnum here, only the spinal root of the eleven cranial nerve passing. But here <coughs> we have the nine cranial nerve, ten cranial nerve, eleven cranial nerve, superior buff of the uh, internal uh, superior buff of the internal jugular vein, inferior petrosal and sigmoidal sinus, major branches of the ascending pharyngeal and also the occipital arteries. Then all these structures are passing through the jugular foramen. Hypoglossal canal, we have the twelve cranial nerve, condyla canal, usually the structure that passing through this canal is an imagery vein. Okay, that passes from the sigmoid sinus to the vertebral vein in the next. And mustard foramen, we have the mustard imagery vein from the sigmoid sinus and meningeal branch of the occipital artery. And for the internal eritrity meters, we have the uh, seven cranial nerve and eight cranial nerve. Also, the laryngeal artery that passes through the, this opening. Okay, uh, just now we have discussed on the internal aspect of the cranial base. And for the internet aspect of the calvaria, so you can see the several groove. Okay, several groove. Uh, we, you can see the superior 
we go for the superstitial sinus. We have the lateral venous lacuna, okay. The, uh, the lateral expansion of the superior sagittal sinus, okay. And uh, we have the arachnoid granulation. So you can see here, this is the arachnoid granulation. Okay. And the branches of the middle meningeal artery. You can see, you can see here, this is the group for the branches of the middle meningeal artery. Okay. Okay, the frontal crest. You also can find the frontal crest. Uh, sometimes you also can find the vital foramen, vital foramen on each side of the circuitous suture through which the imagery vein that passes between the superior circuitous sinus and vein in the deep, uh, and also the vein in the deep flow and scalp. Okay, wall of the cranial cavity is very in thickness. Okay, wall of the cranial cavity is very in thickness in deep flow region. Most of the bone of the calvaria contain the internal and external table of contact bone which is separated by the spongy diplo. The inner table is thinner than the outer table, and diplo is a cancellous spawn that contains red marrow, uh, marrow during the life. So it means that the diplo will have the cancellous spawn, and it contains the red bone marrow, okay? During it. And through which the run, can, uh, the run canal formed by the diploid. Okay. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Okay, thank you.